So Web Exodus is uh, a web-based interface. Uh, it was uh, first created for the uh, FP7 IDEGA project. The idea being that uh, not all people will have access. During disaster management, not all people will have access to uh, the Urban Exodus, which is, which is a desktop kind of simulation tool which requires a lot of computing power. So Web Exodus allows end users to specify uh, the, uh, the, sp the spatial data or all the input data that the simulation tool requires. And you can run the simulations remotely. Uh, so we have a few cluster machines running uh, with, with a lot of computing power. So the, the simulations run remotely and you can uh, uh, view the results on back on web access. So the first tutorial is about specifying the spatial data. So when we model the tabletop exercises, the scenarios for tabletop exercises, uh, the end users first of all uh, tell us what is the area that needs to be evacuated, the, and then uh, they specify what are the target locations. So the target locations or refuge locations or shelter locations where people can take uh, or uh, safely uh, during uh, large-scale evacuations. For the first tutorial, we're going to specify the evacuation area and the targets. So you can go into any one of these uh, events. So in fact, there's the workshop. It's an it's event called workshop. So let's click on the workshop. So under the column events, I assume you've all managed to log into the interface. If anyone hasn't managed to log into uh, the web exodus, please let me or one of uh, Steve or uh, I'll say no. OK, I assume that you've all logged in. So we click on the workshop and click on the, uh, create new location. Now this brings up the map of the entire world, but uh, we can start with uh, giving a name to the location. You, you can give whatever name you want, but I'm going to, in order for me to be able to identify it easily, I'm uh, putting in my own name over here. The way Web Exodus was created uh, was a bit inspired by the disaster management tools which uh, make people work collaboratively. So I wanted all the users to be able to see what other people do. But now uh, my mindset, mindset has changed with the, with the re new recent projects and we would like each person to have their own uh, uh, scenarios. But currently the way Web Exodus works, uh, anyone can log in and create their uh, uh, test cases and run them and other people can uh, um, see the, uh, the, the test cases created by all the people. Uh, so since the map of the world is uh, quite big and geography, I'm, I'm quite bad at geography, so there's an easy tool to, uh, to, to key into your location. So in, in my case, I'm going to type in Greenwich. So you can type in any, uh, the name of any town or place that you want to and click on search. And this will give you a list of results. Now, I don't want Greenwich in other places, United States. I want the Greenwich in the uh, United Kingdom. So I, I select it. And we enter uh, into the place that we are in right now. So the first step, as I said, was to specify the, uh, the area that needs to be modeled. So this is the area that we want to study. So this is the area that we want to find out what the evacuation uh, statistics uh, is going to be. Uh, so there's a number of options over here. The simplest option is to draw a box specifying the area that needs to be evacuated. Now, you can also do more complex shapes. So you can also do a polygon. So in many cases, the area to be evacuated is not a, uh, a regular polygon. It's, uh, it's often an irregular um, polygon. So this allows you to draw any shape that you want. And you can also do things like drag the evacuation area. So if you think that you've missed a little bit, you can uh, drag it around. You can delete it and start over, uh, all over again. So in order to proceed to the next step, 
the, the key thing is to have at least one uh, polygon specific point. And then again, uh, so, and then you can specify the targets. So the targets can be point targets. Uh, for example, ends of the roads can be a target. In this case, the, what the target means is if people drive off, they're, they're considered to be safe once they reach uh, that uh, target location. But you can also have a polygon target which is inside. which could represent, an, a, 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 for example, a park where people uh, take temporary refuge. So similarly, you can uh, drag the targets, you can delete them. You can also draw line targets. So for example, if I want to say that I want to consider all the people who cross this line to be safe, then you can draw line targets. So what this would basically do is it would consider all the people who have reached the ends of the roads along this line uh, to be safe. So once, once you've done this, you click on uh, save and exit. And then if you go back into the workshop area, you should be able to find one the area that I've just created. Now the table is uh, got a little bit messy, but we're going to fix that. So Web Exodus is not commercially available yet. It's a research project, so uh, it, it, uh, we, we can't expect it to be fully functioning uh, currently. So it's still under our development because the. Web Exodus started from the IDEA project where they wanted to have one interface for every simulation tool. So they had one interface for evacuation, one for fire simulation tools, and the other tools, and all, many other disaster management tools. But currently, in the projects that we're working on, the Infra project, they, they prefer us to run the uh, simulation Exodus in the background. And all they're interested is in getting the, our, our results so that they can display it on their training platform or the command and control tools. So currently, we haven't made huge, um, after the end of IDEA project, we haven't made uh, a lot of development on it, but this, this is a very good tool for uh, incident commanders um, to, uh, to, to play with and to, to test the evacuation procedures. So once we create the area, so firstly, there's, um, the way Web Exodus works is uh, it, it works in two phases. So you have the pre-incident phase and the post-incident or during the incident phase. So the pre-incident is what we just did. We specify the area to be uh, uh, to be modeled, and we specify the target location. And uh, the, the, one of the time consuming bits of uh, uh, modeling using uh, for urban exodus is to convert the spatial data into uh, the computer simulation. So in order to be able to convert the, the road networks, the pavements, and uh, the squares, and uh, 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 things like that into, uh, into a computer representation of space. And this can be a time consuming process. But there is a, uh, an ex, urban exodus just allow an automatic conversion of uh, the spatial data into an exodus geometry. So once you have generated the area, We need to then measure. So this is the area that I just uh, generated. I, I, so I click on that and click on mesh location. And it says mesh request sent successfully. So what this does is it downloads the OpenStreetMap data for the area that you specified. And it also generates a mesh X file, which consists of the targets that 
uh, we, we, we have specified as well. So this is not exactly the same area that I just generated, but I'm just uh, for, for uh, as an example, I've taken uh, a couple of. So the web exodus has generated two uh, files over here, the OSM and the MeshX file. So the OSM data is basically XML data, which consists of nodes and uh, polygons. Whereas the MeshX file consists of the location of the, uh, the OpenStreetMap file that was just downloaded. It also contains the, the targets that we've uh, just generated as well. And Exodus has a way of importing the MeshX file. So going to the tools construction. So th this is the urban Exodus, the, the desktop simulation tool which requires the uh, a software to be installed on your own computer. So we do a legacy import, select MeshX. So this is not something that is part of the tutorial, but this is something that I'm just demonstrating because you don't have access to Urban Exodus because it requires a dongle to, to run. So selecting the MeshX file is now generating some of the nodes. So, so this is a process of converting the XML data that you see from OpenStreetMaps into an Exodus geometry. It's taking a while to generate the geometry. Okay, it's finally done the conversion. So this is quite a small area. Uh, I'm, I'm using for uh, as a demonstration. So it, in the tabletop exercises for the in project, we have worked on much larger areas of about 20 kilometers wide. So this is a conversion of the uh, OpenStreetMap data that you see here on the left hand side to the Exodus geometry. So if you can see some of these structures. So this road over here is the road over here on OpenStreetMaps. And this building, it's got a slightly different shape when it's converted into Exodus, but this is the same building as this one here. Now, an Exodus has uh, a, a few, four, four different modes. So we are now in the geometry mode, which deals with the building of uh, the, um, the spatial data consisting of the area to be modeled and the uh, exits. So if you click on the exits over here, so the target exits have been specified in web exodus over here. So it's one, one, two, three, four. So if I go to the first target, so exodus in the, autom the automatic meshing process has automatically generated uh, an exit in urban exodus. So similarly, you have uh, the four different targets. So the targets are the places that the agents in the simulation head to for safety. Now I'm going to go into the uh, population setup. And uh, populate this region with randomly with 100 people. So this is a very, very uh, crude way of doing things. Um, so in, in reality, we are working with the uh, Italian National Fire Corps, the Virginia Del Fico, who actually give us an XML output for the population data, uh, which is the number of people at different uh, locations. Because when, when it is a very large urban area, we can't, it's quite difficult to specify the population um, in, in, in uh, great detail manually. So we, we go into file-based formats which can import the data. But in this case, it's a very simple example. I'm just randomly, for testing purposes, I'm going to just put in 100 people into the um, simulation tool. So the entire area is going to get populated with 100 people. 
then I'm now going to run the simulation. And we get an error message saying that a person is on a non-connected node. So this is one of the issues uh, that we have with the conversion, the automatic conversion of the uh, OSM, the OpenStreetMap data into Exodus geometries. Because of uh, missing data in OpenStreetMaps, and um, uh, also because of the in inaccuracies in the conversion of uh, uh, the, the data, especially some of the areas are very complex, uh, having flyovers which are really, really difficult to, uh, to mesh automatically. So one of the things that we do is we do the, uh, auto, uh, the automatic meshing, and then after that, we either go into OpenStreetMap data and add the missing data and then remesh it, or we go directly into Urban Exodus and fix some of the issues, uh, the meshing issues. So depending upon the accuracy of the results that we need, the, the preparation of the spatial data can be uh, quite time consuming, especially if it's a very large area. So I'm going to delete all the uh, people that are not connected in this case. So this is a very crude example because this hasn't been prepared yet. But this kind of shows the, the process involved in uh, uh, preparing the geometries. So this has uh, produced a simulation data. Which, okay, so Exodus produces a sim file showing the output results. And we get quite a bit of results over here, a huge text file to, to go through. So out of 100 people, only 60 people have evacuated in this case. And that's because 40 of the agents were in non-connected, uh, unconnected areas. And we get a lot of other uh, various uh, evacuation statistics, such, such as the response times of the people. So in this case, we, don't, we, don't, we did not really specify the response times, so people have uh, randomly been uh, given uh, response times. And we also have data such as the distance traveled by people, the time that people spent uh, in, uh, uh, in traveling to the exits. And we also have data for each of the targets. So we get to know how many people used each of the targets. So target one in this case was used by nine people. Target three in this case was not used by any, any, any of the people. So this finishes the first tutorial and also a demonstration of how the, uh, so, so we specified an evacuation area and the targets and then we imported that into Urban Exodus and it was automatically matched and then we could then go into Urban Exodus and uh, populate the area and do the results. So this is typically, typically done before the, uh, in, the incident actually happens. So if we know that an area is uh, susceptible to wildfires or earthquake or floods, then we can, uh, before, before it actually happens, we can pre-plan uh, various sort of scenarios. I'll, I'll just have a walk around and then I'll do the second tutorial. So the key point about this is, is that uh, you would pre-build all of your models for your region. So if you're a local authority, you would have your region pre-built uh, and you would have a number of what-if scenarios pre-prepared uh, looking at, for example, different types of wildfire scenarios, maybe ones that have happened historically, or floods, or floods that happen on a regular basis, you'd add those pre-built into the model. And you would then call up web exodus during an actual incident, and you would modify that case. So you wouldn't have to go through all this and build the whole case. You would pull up the library case, the closest library case, modify that to best fit your current situation. That, that's the idea with the web exodus. So could you use census data to yeah. replicate the... Yeah, and that's, and that's one of the... Um, we're working with the Italian authorities. Um, they've got, it's like census data yeah. for, their, for the particular region. And we're working on way in there. And that's because these regions, you've generated them, and you've meshed them, 
but we haven't actually prepared the geometries for those uh, uh, for those locations that you generated. So for running your new uh, scenarios, please utilize just one of these, which is, which is called under locations, exits corrected. So you start for creating your new scenarios uh, to follow the tutorial, the second tutorial. So I'm just going to create one uh, uh, new scenario myself. I'm going to call it for myself. And then click on, so we're just giving a name to the scenario so that we can identify. And then we proceed to the population setup page. And again, you can uh, draw various shapes to populate the area. So by default, so what this yellow zone says is that we're going to populate this yellow zone with 100 people. So 100 is the default, but you can change the defaults. You can go in and change the default uh, value to 300. So what this will do is it will populate this yellow polygon with uh, 300 agents in it. And the distribution of the agents will be such that we have 65% of the people in buildings, so if there are any buildings over here, then 65% will be distributed to the buildings. 20% will be placed on the roads, for example, this road and this road over here. And 15 people in open spaces if there are any over there. And there's a lot of other default values you have, like the response times to the people, the start, uh, the time at which they start responding, the walking speeds of the people. So these are the default values we have, but if you have if you want a, uh, people to be working faster, you can change the values here. But well, once you change that, you click on uh, update population data, which will apply the data that you've just uh, created. You can also have irregular shapes, polygon shapes. You can also modify these zones. So for example, if we wanted to make some changes to this zone, click on it, click on view zone data. And I can change some of the uh, things over here. So for example, if I don't want people, so in my question models, by default, people go to their nearest exits. But if I want them uh, not to use the nearest exit, but to go to a specific exit, for example, if I want the people over here to reach, to go to target four, then I can specify the target uh, four to this uh, uh, block of population there. Uh, the next step is to go into the hazard setup page. And here we can draw hazards. Now there are two ways of, uh, of putting in hazards. So one way is to just put in, draw the hazards. For example, to show that this, this road is blocked. Uh, the other way is to import the hazards from a simulation tool such as a fire simulation tool or the flood simulation tool. So once this is done, I click on submit to save the scenario that we've just created. And then three, and then run the simulation. And when you click on run the simulation, the simulation runs remotely on a, a cluster PC that we have. It takes a couple of minutes. If this simulation has finished, so when the color tint is gray, that means that that evacuation simulation has uh, completed. So you can click on it. And click on view find out results to see the uh, evacuation simulation results. So this is the uh, scenario that I just created with, a, with about 300 people in this uh, zone over here. And these blocks, these squares are actually six by six meter squares and the color denotes the population density. So the more the number of people in these uh, squares, the hotter the color. In this case, there are not many people over there, so we, it's all blue, which is less density people. 
and we can run to the simulation. We can either step to the simulation this way, or we can just decide to play it. Now, target two is the nearest target for the people here, but since we set target four as the exit that they need to take, so we see all the people in this block hopefully trying to uh, go to target four, if the simulation works fine. And here we see the, uh, so the simulation time steps for 10 seconds. So every 10 seconds we get an update on the progress of the simulation. Okay, these people seem to be uh, exiting uh, somewhere other than the target. So I'm not sure what's happening there, but uh, th this is something that we are still uh, working on. So all of 400 people, 329 people uh, managed to, uh, to evacuate. And we have some evacuation uh, statistics over here. Now this is a very simple simulation with very uh, simplistic uh, response times and uh, a lot of uh, parameters have been uh, assumed. Uh, but th this gives us some sample results that Exodus uh, can generate. So if we have chemical simulations involved uh, through a chemical simulation tool, so based on the exposure levels, the uh, urban Exodus can determine the, the level of injuries that people have. So this completes the second tutorial. So we have taken a scenario that was already prepared. We populated it, and we ran the simulation, and uh, we viewed the simulation results on uh, the Web Exodus. So Web Exodus isn't a real a simulation engine. It is just a graphical user interface, and it utilizes uh, remote computers that we have here, which is actually running the uh, simulations for us. So today, I think we have about uh, a few scenarios that have been run, one by David as well, and 